Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are talking about the new Dior Rouge Dior Forever lipsticks. These are a matte lipstick. Notice the matte black, very sleek packaging here. You have the CD logo on the top and along the belt and everything here is a matte black. You have this silver slim style bullet inside. These are not refillable. This packaging does not come out. If you are new to my channel, click the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit the notification bell for notifications of all of my latest videos. We are going to dive into these lipsticks today. We have arm swatches, lip swatches, and comparisons. And let's go ahead and get started. So these retail for 42 US dollars. There are 28 shades. Some of them are limited edition and exclusive to the Dior website. However, the majority of the shades are currently available at Sephora, soon to come to other retailers as well. So this is a new permanent line of lipsticks. They do have a fairly good color range, but again, with most of these like matte style lipsticks, there are going to be predominantly deeper shades compared to lighter nude shades. However, I feel like Dior did a pretty good job of including more nude and neutral shades than you often see in these lines. So let's talk a little bit about these while we are swatching. I picked up seven of these shades and this here is a shade 100 Forever Nude Look. If you're familiar with Dior lipsticks, you may have seen 100 Nude Look in many of their other finishes. This is one of their iconic shades. So of the 28 shades, they did include three iconics, 100, 999, which is their classic red, and 720 icon. So we will be looking at some comparisons of this in the regular matte lipstick as well. So you can see we've got one sheer layer and it's built up here. Then we have 300 Forever Nude Style. And 300 is a relatively recent addition to the Dior color lineup. I think it's a really pretty brown with a touch of mauve in there. You can see that 100 nude look, this is gonna be your nude with a little bit of a peachy pink vibe, whereas this one here is gonna be a little bit more of a nut brown with a touch of mauve in it. 505 Forever Sensual. I do wanna say that the color descriptions and the swatches online do not seem very accurate. <laughs> so notice this one here is kind of like a soft brown with peach in it. So online, it was described as being a little bit cooler in tone than it actually is in person. You can see it definitely has more of that warm peach tone to it. And 558 Forever Grace. This is a really beautiful, more of a warm rose shade. There is still a touch of brown in there, a little bit of kind of that brick color, but it's gonna be more of a brick rose than a brick red. And this is 732 Forever Vibrant. Notice in the bullet, it actually looks red with a tint of orange, but look at it on the skin. It's really gonna be more of a vibrant orange shade. And there are actually a couple orange shades in this lineup. I thought this one looked the most unique. Look at that beautiful orange. And it just has just a touch of red in there. It's a really beautiful, vibrant shade. This is 742 Forever Sisterhood. And this is kind of a classic blue-toned red, blue-based red. Really like this shade. It's just a stunning, you know, classic red shade there. And 866 Forever Together, this is going to be a red with more of those brick tones in there. It's more of a burgundy red. And this is what is currently on my lips right now. So this is the lineup I have. We have 100, 300, 505, 558, 732, 742, and 866. All right, so we're gonna go over some product details for these lipsticks as we go over some lip swatches. But first, just note this is the inside flap of the box. Because these lipsticks are highly pigmented, they recommend raising the bullet no more than two millimeters for application. And that's also one of the reasons for the slim style packaging. It's keeping the majority of the product kind of tightly enclosed here. So there is less chance of breakage occurring with these lipsticks. 
Let's go over some details of these lipsticks. They are made in France and they have 3.2 grams of product and they are considered an intense couture color transfer proof lipstick with bare lip comfort. And that is how Dior is promoting these. So according to Dior, you have 16 hours of comfort and 16 hours of color with these lipsticks. And you're going to maintain that bare lip feel throughout the day so it will be comfortable without feeling drying. A couple notes about ingredients. There is beeswax in these as well as fragrance. Now, another, the big selling point of these is the fact that these are transfer proof lipsticks. So they have an ultra matte finish. They are resistant to contact with things like fabric, skin, and so forth. So these are truly going to be transfer proof, mask proof. I have tested these out. And I also wanted to mention that these are infused with the red peony extract, and that's to maintain the natural hydration to keep it comfortable while you maintain that bare lip feel. There are 28 shades currently in this line. They retail for 42 US dollars each. And as I mentioned before, there are three iconic shades that have been carried over into this line. We have 100, 999, and 720. And there's one special limited edition shade, and that is 111 Forever Night. And that is a charcoal black lipstick. I was actually very interested in this, but I didn't think I'd wear it, so I decided not to pick it up now. I might pick it up in the fall though. I have to say it looks really interesting. A lot of times these lipsticks that look black end up looking more like an eggplant purple on the lips. This is not supposed to do that. So if you have been looking for a black lipstick, that might be one to check out. It is a limited edition. So uh, talking a little bit more about my thoughts on these, I have to say I'm incredibly impressed with these lipsticks. They really do give you that bare lip feel. I would say if you're familiar with the Chanel Ultra 10 U Duos, it is kind of similar to when you put on that color pigment before you add the gloss, you know how you get a little bit of that stickiness on your lips? They actually can get pretty sticky and uncomfortable. I'm like probably the only person who does not really love those lip products. I never wear them because I just don't find them all that comfortable for me. But that stickiness, there's a tiny, tiny bit of that in the Dior. And you can kind of feel that throughout the day. So... They're not gonna feel like completely dry on your lips. They're like 99% dry and you have 1% of that tackiness. Now it's not tacky enough that anything could stick to it or that it's uncomfortable, but I think that is one of the things that helps prolong these being transfer proof. So I have tested these out for several days and I have been wearing them. I have to say, I really like how you can put this color on, you can leave it on, you can eat, drink, whatever, wear a mask all day, and when you take off that mask at the end of the day, your lips still look like they have been freshly applied. If you want to go to an event, you know, go to work all day, you've got something afterwards, you don't wanna do touch-ups, this is the kind of lipstick that is perfect for that. These really look good all day. I do have a little clip here to show you what it looks like after 10 hours, and you can see how fresh this still looks. So the little clip I have is after 10 hours, but I have worn these over 16 hours. I would have to say when you get to about the 16 hour mark, I do notice some fading like on the inner portion of my lips, you know, the part that is closer to the inside of my mouth. There is definitely a little bit of wear there, but the majority of your lips still look incredibly fresh. And I find that to be really, really commendable. So I have to say, I absolutely love these lipsticks. I'm not a huge matte lipstick person. I've become more interested in them over the past couple of years as the formulas have improved. And I have to say, I really like these. They are going to feel a little creamy when you first put them on, but after 10 minutes, they dry down and they do have that bare lip feel. As I mentioned, occasionally you might feel like just the tiniest tackiness on the lips, but it's really pretty insignificant. It doesn't bother me at all. And I have to say, I'm really impressed. So let me just show you how well these stay. All right, so on my lips right now, I have the lipstick on in 866 Forever Together. And the outline around the edges is the Chanel 
uh, lip crayon in 188 Bren Carmen. This is my favorite with reds. Let me just show you this here. So love that shade. You can see it's going to be a bit cooler than the 866, but I think they just go beautifully together. So we've got a clean tissue here. Notice there's really no lipstick that came off, but some of the lip pencil came off. I find that just really impressive. So I drink out of a huge water bottle throughout the day. I don't have lipstick on the rim. You know, it's, it's kind of nice. And again, it stays comfortable on the lips. Now I have worn this for, uh, I'm not sure how long I had the mask on, maybe four or five hours or so. And I have to say there was absolutely nothing in my mask. I do wear the KN95s though, that kind of jut out. So it's not often in contact with my lips. But again, no issue with that. You can see licking my lips now. There's maybe like a little bit of a chalky taste to it, but even that isn't going to create like a lot of transfer or anything. These are obviously, you know, anything can, be tran can transfer once you get it wet, but you're still not gonna get much after having like a meal and wiping my lips and so forth. I can get off a little bit if it's wet, if it's dry, nothing really comes off. For removal at night, using your regular makeup cleanser, I find it didn't come off all the way. It still left a stain on my lips. You ha I had to use an oil cleanser to get all of the pigment off of my lips. So just some things to note. I hope those are helpful tips. So notice how good the lips still look even after like rubbing this off and so forth. So it's really gonna hold up very well. And I do find these to be comfortable. Now, in terms of hydration, I don't find these lipsticks to be hydrating, but they're not taking away any hydration from my lips either. I have worn them for several days consecutively and have not noticed any decrease in the moisture in my lips. But if you're somebody like me, I like having an emollient texture on my lips. I love topping things with lip balm and stuff like that. You know, these will work just fine with that. <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is if you like that texture, then you're probably still gonna wanna add something like that because it's just gonna feel like you have nothing on your lips. So just as your regular lips can start to feel like you need something on there, something hydrating throughout the day, you know, you're still gonna have that sensation with these as well. But, you know, otherwise it's just as though you have absolutely nothing on your lips all day. And I find that really nice. Now let's talk about a few other types of matte lipsticks. So this is one of the Rouge Dior lipsticks and they have several different finishes. There's velvets, mattes, satins, and so forth with this. This is 100 nude look in the matte version. So we're gonna compare that. We'll put that right here. And you can see that it's a little bit peachier. The uh, new one here in the Dior Forever is just a little bit pinker, a little bit cooler in tone. And to say I like the new shade a little bit more, I find I don't reach for this one as much because it's just a little bit peachier. Now, formula-wise, I have to say I prefer this new matte, the Forever, over these. I find the Rouge Dior mattes to be a little bit drying. The Rouge, Rouge Dior velvets, however, I really like those. So just a little difference. I find these ones, the mattes, to be drying to my lips, whereas the velvets are more neutral on my lips. And I find these new ones, the Rouge Dior Forevers, to be neutral on my lips as well, but you have that magnificent staying power. Now, one of my favorite matte lipsticks are the Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvets. This here is shade 10 Beige New. And you can see that that is going to be similar to 100 Forever Nude. Really like that. One of the differences though is the Dior is going to dry down to your matte finish pretty quickly. These are a creamy matte. So they're gonna go on, you're gonna have that emollient texture for a few hours before that fades and you're left with a stain. Stain power wise, you know, the Dior Forevers, they kind of crush everything out of the water for how perfect they look, but these will last all day. But I always feel, you know, after like eight hours or so of like topping them with a lip balm or something like that, not for comfort so, so much as to kind of smooth out the pigment that's remaining on my lips and kind of refresh that. This here's another Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvet in 36 Lanterdie. Just wanted to compare that over here 
with the red one. This is going to be 742 Forever Sisterhood with Givenchy 36. You can see they're similar. The Givenchy is ever so slightly warmer or rather more neutral in comparison to Forever Sisterhood, which just has the slightest bit more blue base to it. And this is 37 Rouge Granet from Givenchy. And you can see that this one's gonna have more purple, a bit more berry in it than any of these Dior ones that I picked up. Now, Givenchy also has a sheer velvet. We're gonna look at that. This one here is 37 in the sheer. As you can see it's gonna be very similar to the deep, but lighter. This is the sheer version of 10 Beige New. Let's put that right here. You can see that's gonna be a bit more beige and obviously a lot lighter. And let's look at 36 Lantardi in the sheer version as well. And you can see when I go sheer, it actually looks a little bit more pink. And let's take a look at a couple of my favorite Dries Via Note lipsticks. One of the things I don't like is I always have to pull out the refill to see the, the name. This one is the matte in number 15 here. Like that. I have to say this is one of the, I love this formula. I think this is fantastic. This is closest to 300, but it has more of a mocha brown vibe to it than 300 does. Just for reference, this one here is 300. And then this other matte one I have is number 75. And we're gonna put this one down here with these reds. And you can see that it is gonna be a bit more, has more of a pink base in comparison. And then one of the new Clay de Pell mattes, this is 110 Exuberant. And this, I really like this new formula. This is really nice. So, but it is gonna be a creamy matte. So it's not going to really dry down until several hours later, but really beautiful. Now a few Chanel lipsticks. This is a Rouge Allure Velvet. This is 108 Terre de Toile. And we're gonna put this one, let's just put it right here. And in general, I find that a lot of the Chanel shades have a bit more of a yellow kind of undertone to them. And you can see this one does as well. Dior tends to run a little bit warmer as well, but more like peachy versus yellow, in my opinion. Now, another one of the Rouge Allure Velvets, this is 277 Rouge Fauve. I wanted to put this one down here. And you can see again, that's gonna be a bit warmer. Now this formula is gonna be a little creamier. It does dry down on the lips. I find I don't reach for those a ton though. I like those, but I don't love them. They don't last as long as something like this new, new Dior. However, I really like the uh, Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet Extremes. This is 118 Eternal. Put this one right here. You can see that's gonna be more pink. This is a beautiful shade. This formula also really great velvet, kind of dries down to a matte finish right away. And it's gonna last quite a while on your lips, like most of the day. And then I wanted to take a look at the Guerlain Rouge G Velvets, just a couple shades here. This is 888. And let's put this one down here. This is a really nice velvet formula as well. I really like this one. It is going to go on well. It's a little bit drier. It still gives you that bare lip feel, but you know, I find that certain shades can be drier than others. So just something to know. A couple of the shades that I have um, can feel drying over time. The majority of them do not. This one here is 880 in the velvet. And then they now have the uh, Velvet Metal, which is going to be a matte with shimmer. And yeah, let's, let's put this one right up here, actually. You can see this is going to have more of that pink base to it. Really beautiful colors. Uh, great formulas. These are kind of all of the formulas I really like for the Velvet and Matte formulas. And I have to say this new Dior Forever is definitely up there. You know, this is going to be a go-to for sure. So that's going to be it for my comparisons, but I do want to mention one other thing. I've had a lot of requests to see the Dior Forever Natural Velvet Powder, the new powder foundation that has come out, and it is what I'm wearing on my face right now. I've been testing it. 
still testing a few more things with it, but I will have this in a review very soon. So if you are interested in this, be sure to click that notification bell so you know when the video pops up. And yeah, I think these are a fantastic lipstick and I'm really impressed with how transfer proof they are, yet how comfortable they remain on the lips. So definitely if that's something that you're looking for, give them a try. They are totally worth it. They've got a really good color range. One more time here, we have shade 100, 300, 505, 558, 732, 742, and 866. And I'm really happy with all of the shades that I picked up. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And please let me know if you've tried these, what you think of them, and if you like them as much as I do. I think they are fantastic. Really happy with these. And again, thanks so much for watching. And I will see you very soon. So have a wonderful day.